Welcome to Power Charting. I'm Bruce Frazier, your host. Today, we're going to talk about industry group studies, what's hot and what's not. And this relates to the big reveal that we're going to have today with Johnny Scan. As you know, Johnny Scan has been a regular on power charting here in recent uh, episodes, and we are th always thrilled to have him. And part of it is because we've been working on a project. Johnny Scan's been working on a project that we want to share uh, the initial big reveal today with you. So, and it is related to industry groups. And so with that, Johnny Scan, welcome. Great to be here, Professor. So we are going to talk about today's agenda, the top-down approach and the, the you know, top-down, which is going from industry groups or going from stock indexes to industry groups, sectors, industry groups, down to stocks. And bottom up would be just do the opposite. Both are very powerful and very good. The thing that I like to do, I've talked about it in prior episodes going back over time, is to do a lot of industry group type trend analysis, looking for bull and bear trends. And so with that, we will then go into uh, the big project that uh, Johnny Scan's been working on which is very much related to what we're gonna talk about today. Little bit on the current market, uh, John, is uh, this is a chart that we put up last week in power charting. And we showed the breakdown of the S&P and then an attempt to rally up into the demand line of this trend channel here. And also talked about preliminary supply roughly equaling uh, last point of supply. And so uh, with this, we want to uh, see where we are now. This chart also is from a week ago, 60 minute point and figure three box reversal. We haven't quite gotten to this count objective yet. And of course, there's even a bigger one out there, which we will address soon. But uh, here is today, this doesn't show the most recent weakness today. But you can see that there was an attempt to rally right up and touch the demand line, a pullback, and now a test of that demand line with the prior peak yesterday and today with a turn today on the CPI news, which also accompanies some uh, discussion or some concerns about interest rates rising. So, uh, John. Here we are, and we're about to, or we already have today, turn below the resistance defined by the PSY peak back at the beginning of September. And so here we are. Uh, would you like to see what it looks like on the intraday point and figure? Now, this is a swing trading chart. And what I've done here, this is 30 minute data, one box reversal, 10 point scale. So it really does a nice job of showing us these intraday swings that can go for a few days to a few weeks. And John, look at how that yellow accumulation count down there at the bottom counted right up in to that initial touch of the demand line from underneath. Fantastic. And Fantastic. then, and then we have a reaccumulation count. And that reaccumulation count confirms the accumulation count over here, not quite there yet, cl pretty close. And so uh, we are testing this and very close to fulfilling this lower objective at 46.10 here. Uh, we may have actually done that. I, I'd have to go back and double check my numbers, but uh, uh, this, I think, is, shows that we are probably in some kind of a range bound structure for the time being, potentially with a turn down. But this area around the uh, 4460 could represent some kind of at least near term support. So range bound, possibly 
we'll watch this pretty closely and see what happens. John, this is the uh, ratio of two ETFs, which we have looked at over time. And this actually is a chart I put up on January 3rd related to my outlook for 2022. And this is the dividend aristocrats, which are stocks that are senior in nature, tend to be what we would define as quote unquote blue chip, been paying dividends for um, many years and are uh, tend to have value orientation to them in their balance sheet and in their income statement versus the internet index, which is in the denominator of this ratio. And that is uh, FDN. And it is more the growth oriented stocks. If you go in and look at the com composition of the portfolio of FDN, you'll see what's in that. And you'll see that you're looking at a ratio of really kind of stayed blue chip value stocks to the more aggressive growth. The decline of this trend channel really represents growth being dominant. And we showed uh, literally back in 21, we've been looking at this for a long time using a couple of different ETF ratio comparisons. And then here into the end of the year, you can see that it jumped up and out just as it did back in late 2019. And so the big question is, does it come back into the channel or does it keep going? Now, uh, I brought this chart up to date and uh, John, here it is. So you can see that it's moved, you know, quite convincingly upward, demonstrating that the aristocrats are acting better on a performance basis than the growth oriented internet index. And uh, so here we are. And what I'd like to point out is look at this structure down here. So John, what does this look like to you being a Wyckoffian? Well, that looks like a stopping action in the down channel that may represent an original accumulation followed by a breakout with a little backup and we're off to the races. Beautiful. And note the sign of strength here. So this is classic late stage accumulation behavior. So sell off below the channel, oversold, rally immediately off of that goes into a sign of strength position, a backup to a higher low, which we would call last point of support, which is roughly equal to the selling climax, a test, and then look at the uh, change of character that is quite convincing, uh, persistent, and so on. Well, there's only one thing to do when you get a structure like that is do a point figure chart. Can you do point figure of relative strength? Absolutely. And here it is. And note, that this accumulation type structure, it's beautiful. Now, this area down here is uh, counted from the last point of support over to the climax and then counted upwards. And we can see that it's rallied up to this area as a ratio. So ratios in relative strength aren't as important as directionality. And so, we can see here that it's rallied up to a level of 51, which is this area of resistance right in here. May have to do more work here. And the count objective of that accumulation is all the way up to 72. Now, what that 72 is, is the area that this ratio was at back in 2015, 2016, before the big bull run and growth. So could we have a big bull run for blue chip aristocrat type companies going forward? And John, this is where I think the big reveal is gonna be really interesting to talk about because I think it addresses some of this. We've got some, we've got some points there, absolutely. Good. So we'll get right to that here in just a minute. Last chart I wanna show you all today is this one, I'm going pretty fast because I want to give John as much time as possible. This chart you've seen before, 
This is the US Treasury 10 year yield. So you can see that here. And this is a point figure using daily data, three box reversal, beautiful big distribution formed, and then a decline. This was back in 2018. This decline into this area was a beautiful count of estimation with a redistribution that confirmed the larger distribution count and then a, an accumulation form. Now note the date on this chart. This chart is January of 2021. So this is a year ago. So what has happened since? Well, here we can see that this first count objective is in the area, at the time it was a below a 1% interest rate for 10 year treasuries. Today it's 154 to 192 is the objective area of the first count uh, segment that we would be looking at. And as we all know, CPI came out today and it was a stiff number. It was really strong. And next week I'm going to talk about CPI PPI. PPI will be out early next week. I think it's Tuesday. PPI is a very important number in combination with CPI, and I think it has some leading characteristics for where CPI is headed. And so I'm going to be showing you some studies on that with Wyckoffian orientation. But here today, I want to show you where interest rates are at. This chart is through yesterday, February 8th. And you can see we've run up to this resistance area where I've drawn this red line. And John, this is a 1.96 yield. So we are right into the zone of this first count objective. Now, this zone down here, 2020 to 21, is what we just counted. The difference is the scale. This is a tenth of a point, a percentage point, one tenth or 10 basis points uh, of yield on the scale. The other one was two basis points, which is a uh, much, much smaller scale increments. Now this count, uh, and let's just go back out, being that we're now up here and into this zone, let's count all the way across using this, uh, uh, more um, this different count orientation. And this count here, and it could grow larger, counts up to 2.6 to 3.2%. So, and if we just start to break out here, we may not, we may have to do more work. But if we start to break out here, uh, I think we could go up to that level uh, uh, stunningly quickly. Now, where is that level on this other chart here that we looked at? Well, 320 is all the way up here. And so 260 is down here, 320 is up here. And that puts us back into the area of that prior high right there. And so this is our count objective. So next week we'll dig in deeper to this and talk more about it. But I wanted to show you where we're at and that we're making that progression in our point and figure work that we did a year ago continues to point the way for us as to where these interest rates could end up. And we could say pretty convincingly that the Fed is really behind the eight ball at this time. Okay, so uh, right now let's pause for a minute and we'll be right back. Well, John, we have here the big reveal. So what are we looking at? We are looking at the new and improved Wyckoff Analytics Wyckoff Market Report. This is going to be a weekly newsletter. We're still in draft form. We're working out the kinks. We've put a lot of technology behind this report to give folks an interactive Wyckoffian experience. How does that sound, Professor? Oh, my gosh. I'm like, I love it. Gosh, any kind so, of a white coffee and experience is great by me, but interactive is even better. Absolutely. Well, your footprints are all over the newsletter, Professor, because of all the guidance that you gave 
in preparing the newsletter and outlining it. And of course, top-down approach. So Fantastic. the newsletter will look at index equivalent ETFs. And the reason we do that is because we can get better volume data than some of the uh, charting services don't provide data, volume data for some of the indices. This way we, we have it for sure. And we do a total stock market comparison for relative strength. And how do you like relative strength in your lineup, Professor? It's everything. Relative strength is my life. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're providing indices, sectors, narrowing the funnel down a bit with the sector analysis. We're then taking a look at the industry books. And wow, I think that looks like top down to favorites. me. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so I see that you, you have some kind of a, a ranking process here. So you're looking at top 10 industry groups. You also have the sectors ranked. And so people can see like what uh, strongest to weakest on the, on the sectors and then see, I see here top 10 industry groups and bottom 10 industry groups. Exactly. So we're providing a segment of uh, the top and worst performing industry groups that are available through the stock charts industry group system, uh, mostly Dow Jones uh, symbols. And that's what we can look at very easily in stock charts. Fantastic charting package. And we're going to use what they offer. So we have the bottoms and then we show the weekly uh, rate of change, ROC, 13 weeks, and 13 weeks is a calendar quarter. How important is quarterly analysis on an institutional level, Professor? Well, it, it's very important. I look at, uh, when I look at the uh, data, the weekly data, even daily data, I always break it down by quarters of a year, one quarter, six months, three quarters, which is 39 weeks, 52 weeks, because this is the time frame that institutions think in terms of. That is their report card. That's how they're evaluated by their clients. And so uh, quarters of the year is a very, very important uh, time frame for these large influential investors. The newsletter is geared around a five day rate of change one week, 13 week, 39 weeks. So we get a wide variety of time periods, uh, all of which are consistent with institutional analysis. Something that's a little different about this uh, market report is that we are trying to see if we can analyze market dynamics in terms of Wyckoff events. Anybody else doing that to your knowledge, Professor? No, I don't know of anybody that is doing that. And, and this is really exciting because I'm seeing here a Wyckoff events summary. And I take it that these numbers, springs, up thrust, backups, and so on, those numbers will change over time. And what are those numbers based on? Well, we've developed scans that search the marketplace for Wyckoff structural events springs, up thrust, backing up action, or stocks breaking down, broken ice, falling through resistance, support, that sort of thing. Uh, we have a little summary of how we scan for those. Scan language itself not available, but the analysis is. So for well, that's example- That's kind of a, a benefit because people don't have to think about the nuances or the, you know, get into the quagmire of scanning because they have Mr. Johnny scan to do that for them. Absolutely. And they, we'll they do the heavy get, lifting. You, you're doing the heavy lifting. And, and honestly, I have to say, John, that uh, I am a list junkie. So I want to see stock lists and I want to be able to just sit there and just go through all of these stocks. And oh my gosh, here's a list of stocks. And are these spring candidates? These are spring candidates. Oh my gosh. Let's and look, sector group, sectors, industry groups. And uh, so this is really fantastic. Now, I'm seeing that these stocks, 
sectors, industry groups, and stocks all have blue, what appears to be links in them. What does that mean? Check this out. When you oh click God. on the link, here's the stock. Wow. So and it's not just the stock, but it's in the format that you have created that best represents your uh, orientation uh, towards looking at these. Exactly. So in this particular case, we're looking for springs or spring-like events. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, really the low value in the recent past is here. So that this area, which is what the scan has detected, mm -hmm. is down to resistance back up. Uh, or down to support it back mm -hmm. up. So uh, different. Um, but what what's, what's really uh, compelling about that is that once you get a, a quality spring type event, you get generally a change of character into a pretty strong advance in the ones that are legitimately springs. And then the reactions that come after that are tend to be shallow, narrow, dull, and those are great opportunities to initiate or add to positions. So this is exactly the kind of thing is, that me as a Wyckoffian would want to see. So here we have uh, Perkin Elmer that's given us uh, a low value in the recent past mm -hmm. with retracement into the structure and look at the leaping character of some of the bars up there along with a very low volume pullback uh, near the 50 period line. Perfect. That's what we're looking for. Is Absolutely. And keep in mind that when you see the, this kind of action, uh, it also demonstrates that this uh, is likely near, uh, has been nearly completely absorbed. And so absorption has occurred. And as a result of that, it moves up easily and quickly. So this is exactly the kind of characteristics we would expect to see after a spring. Here's our breakout category, which look for stocks that have gone through resistance, are residing above resistance, or even taking mm -hmm. off. So the ones that have gone the farthest are at the top. The ones that are uh, still closer to the re, uh, resistance level are toward the bottom. That's based uh, on the way things are good. ranked. So we mm -hmm. click on one and we find uh, Raymond James here. And look what's happened. Breakout residing top, low volume breakdown, upward slope on scooter and uh, relative strength to BTI. All so scooter, things... scooter is the bottom panel. The next one up is the relative strength. Right. And right. of course you can see there with Raymond James that relative strength is quite good really uh, throughout the beginning of 2022 onward. And so we have uh, really a combination of relative strength and price acting quite well. So a tremendous number of uh, really interesting stocks in these lists. If you want to go to the dark side, we do have breakdowns. And here's a very popular stock over time. Scott's miracle Grow may be finding a bottom. So here is a, a lower low, but nice recovery off of that. But look at how all of our lines are really degraded over time and our 50 is below the 200 and 200 is down sloping. Very troubled uh, technical picture. We can look at another stock, Avery Dennison, and uh, boom, broke wow. right through the bottom of support, trying to find some leverage footing there, but look at the volume there. Big volume off the break. That's uh, that's a big white coffee thing. That's tremendous supply. And then also note that the relative strength has been making lower highs and is basically living under its moving average. Something that I tend to look for in stocks that are uh, in their downtrends. And so uh, this is uh, uh, really special. And then of course, you know, I look at lots of lists, but I'm really only looking for a couple of good ideas. And so the other thing that that tells me when I see these is that I can look at the industry group and I can look at the sector and I can look for commonalities of, uh, you know, sort of stocks as a, a flock going up or going down together. Really interesting.
Yes, and you can detect the analytical consistency between the top groups and the springs and the breakouts versus the breakdowns finding um, in the, uh, the bottom area of the industry group list. So a lot of meat on this newsletter is really enough to carry you many days into the week. A lot of information there. And uh, all of this is available to people who do subscribe to stock charts and those who don't, because even if you don't have an account, it will pull up in the free format. Now, you plan to offer this as a subscription at some point in the future. Right now, this is really uh, um, uh, not, not at a point where it can be subscribed to yet. And we have about 14 seconds left. <laughs> so it's a demo project. Button it up. Yeah, it's a demo project. We'll keep you up to date. And a couple of complimentary versions will be available in the next couple of weeks. And we will definitely do more uh with uh this in power charting too over time and with that we'll say so long thank you john